Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO DVS, part of the Midwich family. Today, another brand new hat. It is getting into autumn in here in the UK, so the hats are definitely coming out in force now. But before we introduce you to a new, not so new product, before you go any further, please do hit that like and subscribe button on our YouTube channel. It really does help us drive the channel forward and lets us know that it is still worthwhile making this weekly content. So I'll pause for three seconds for you to go and hit that subscribe button. And there we go. You've definitely hit it and thank you very much. So this isn't a brand new product specifically, but it is new to the channel. Nobody has really advertised it. So Dave here thought, why not go and advertise it? Oh, the battery's gonna run out. That's good, hang on a second. Okay, I've just charged the battery up. That was my fault, I actually did forget it. We have it plugged in, so the camera will be fine. Um, a couple of things, if you are interested, it's a really cool hat, it's from there. It's a Welsh, traditional Welsh wool makers, one of the only ones left in Welsh history, to be honest, it's a very good hat maker. So yeah, go check it out. Um, okay, so, Brand new to the channel, uh, not much sort of out there on social media, so I thought why not make a video. They've been around for about six months now. Should have done a video before this to be honest, but here we go. Now, a lot of you are familiar with the Hike Intercom setup. There's a lot of it here. So the modular, you know, the one button, two button, four button, even the little uh, KV6113, you know, uh, face rack, access control units. This is a staple of our product range. What I would say is if you've tried the Hike Vision Intercom range before, we have a full IP and a full 2i HD version of all this modular stuff. If you've tried it before and it didn't quite work out for you, give it another go. They've done a lot of improvements with firmware, ease of use, the wizard to allow you to configure it. And especially with the 2i HD version, so it's basically IP over 2i, two, two it's set by deck switches. We've done a video on it before. It's so easy to deploy. You just simply turn the deck switches, so binary deck switches on the rear of each unit, indoor station, outdoor station, connect it up through the distributors, the power supplies, and it'll just work. It'll just talk itself. There's very little programming to do. So if you've used it before and you didn't have a great experience, definitely try it again, which leads me on to this brand new unit. So we've got the traditional 10 inch Android. So this is a, Indoor station, this is the smart one. It's run on Android rather than Linux like these ones here. This allows you to install two Android apps on there. There is a new version of this coming out very shortly. Um, more on that when it comes out, but I, I'm very excited how the indoor station with the Android is developing. We, so that's the 10 inch. We've got the seven inch one. So we've got two seven inch ones and we've also got a 10 inch IP, so standard 10 inch IP and two 10 inch, uh, seven, so 10 inch, two seven inches. They're all IP, all of these are IP, except that's the Android version there. Now, they're fine, they're available in black, all black, white, and we do have a, um, a white version of this as well. But sometimes you don't need all of this in, a, in, a, in an apartment living, certainly. It may be you want a very simple unit, it wants to look elegant, you want it to be cost effective, but very usable for the end user, the client, the resident. This is where this unit comes in. So it is new, as I said, I'll do that so you can see the part number there. There we go. So it is the DS-KH6110-WE1. Now, we'll take it out of the box. It's very simple. Inside the box itself, we've got the screws, the fitting back plate, the instruction manual, so you do need that fitting back plate to mount it to the wall. We're actually just gonna fit it up here. But this is a 4.3 inch screen. So it is a lot smaller, a lot more compact than the seven inch and certainly the 10 inch. So if I put it side by side with a seven inch, even if I just put it there, you can see compared to a seven inch unit, how compact that actually is. Now you put it next to a 10 inch unit and it becomes considerably smaller. So it's a very, very small unit. So what we're gonna do is fit it here, put it on the network, and we're just gonna give you a very brief overview. It gives the same functionality effectively as these units here and a much more compact size. So yes, the screen is gonna be smaller, so the camera might not be as visually pleasing from the intercom or any cameras externally that you link to it, but it's gonna do the job. 
It is completely touchscreen. They don't have physical buttons on it. So on the back, there's a 12 volt power and a PoE network socket there. Click it in, very, very simple. On the front, uh, trying to not get the reflection in there, you've got a call answer, call hang up, video feed, mute and not disturb button. And you've got these four buttons there, you can see along there. They're customizable. So you can actually assign your own custom actions to these four buttons here, which makes it a little bit different from this. These are complete touch screens, but these have got the sort of software driven customizable buttons. And then of course you've got the door open. They're all, it's very flush. Nothing stands out as you can see there. So they are uh, touch and that's the door open if you want it. It's a very, very simple unit, but actually quite effective, especially if you're looking for a cost of, they are cheaper than these units as well. So if you're looking for a cost saving, you don't need that unit. You wanna make it ultra compact, especially in an apartment living next to the front door. You haven't got much space. This could be the ideal solution to you. Now it is only available in this one color. So it's all black. It's like a gloss finish effectively. But it, I think this definitely has a market for this, especially as, other brands and IP intercoms offer different variations. This 4.3 inch could be the one for you. And like I said, if I put it there, you can see just by looking at it, the, the size saving and the cost saving that this would deliver to your project, to your customer. So I'm quite excited by it. I, I really am. I know that's quite odd to be excited about an indoor station, but I think it's got potential. So I'm gonna stop the video. I'm gonna fit this unit here. I'm gonna simply power it with a PoE port. There's a PoE switch behind there, plug it onto the same network, and then we're just gonna literally program it really simply, and then we'll use the camera. So we'll program it via the laptop, it's probably the easiest. And then we're gonna then transfer you back here and we'll just show you interacting with it to show you it working effectively. So it's a quite a simple video, quite a short overview, but give me a couple of minutes. I'm gonna fit that to this back station here, back wall, sorry, and then we'll be back, so stay tuned. Okay, so, if you remember, or if you don't remember and you want to know, all our latest IP intercom support web browser functionality. So you can configure it through the software, through Hike Central, through IMS4200, or if you've got the DS-KD8003, and it's the B version or above, and it's on the latest firmware, it supports the web browser. So if you've got one of the original module intercom master stations, the core station with the camera effectively, and it's the non-B version that doesn't support the web browser. So you do have to do it for the software. They've been obsolete for two years now. So we're gonna base it on a factor. You're just gonna simply web browse into the intercom. Now this is an existing system. So we're not programming it from scratch. I've already done content on that. We're simply adding this new 4.3 inch indoor station to an existing system. So we're gonna web browse into it, which we already are prepared prepared for and we're going to bring up the web browser web browser is very common to all of the high vision range if you know one high vision product generally you can navigate around it it's very intuitive and it is very easy to use now if i press the play button this is the ultra wide almost 180 degree image from the call station itself which would be situated on the, and there's me, situated on the outside of the front door or the apartment block, etc. So this is it here. So we're programming this one up. And it is, like I said, it is, is, it is an existing system. If I go into device management, it already tells you, well, I did have one, it's gone offline. Um, I've actually unplugged it because it makes it easier to make this content. But we are gonna add a new that new 4.3 inch call station. So if I go to SADP, oh, it's already open, look. SADP is already open and it's down here, the inactive one, you can see it's there. So I can activate it. Oh, I've got two selected, that's why. So I can activate it through here, look. So I can use SADP, activate it, so Device is activated. We're going to enable DHCP. Don't 
done. Quick refresh. I just need to look for it in this list again. Uh, shout if you see it. Because my eyes are not the best. There we go. So that is the IP address dot two one eight there. What we do need is the serial number of this unit because the way it works is when you program it through this interface, you need the serial number. So it's nine digits of this here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's that there is the nine digit serial. It is on a sticker on the box. It's also on the back of the unit. You don't have to do it this way. Okay. Now to add a unit, you simply click on add. It's an indoor station. You add the password, which is this here. Registration password, which is already set in the unit itself. Uh, it's not that one. It's in the, when you set up this system, as part of the modular call station, you need to set a registration password. All of the devices you add to it have to match that registration password. It's the new security 2.0 protocol. So I know what that is. It's that one there. Serial number is this. IP address is this here. So it's 10.4.218. Floor number one. Room number four, I'm going to call it. It could be anything. It needs to match your scheme, but we're just going to call it that. I'm going to click OK. That can take, it says offline, you need to give this. It can take 10 seconds. It can take 60 seconds. So if I click refresh, it's still offline. You need to give this generally about 60 seconds for it to go and synchronize with that unit. And providing the password, the IP address, the registration password is the main part to this. If that does not match, it will not come online. I can't stress that enough. The registration password is in this main unit here. Uh, password settings there, say that the registration password is set there at the beginning, but obviously I've already set it. I do hope it's the right one. So okay, it does take a minute or two to do it. So I'm gonna pause the video and we'll give it 60 seconds more. Okay, so I went away and uh, it's online. I deleted the offline one just to tidy it up for demonstration purposes. It looks messy when you've got stuff that's added and offline effectively. I guess we'll that in the background. So added it the way I just did. It comes online. If you ever get problems with after a couple of minutes, they don't come online, do two things. Reboot the call station, go to configuration, maintenance, do a reboot and see then if it comes online. Sometimes they just get stuck, especially if they haven't been rebooted for months and months and months. That may be the simple fix. But also check the firmware because a lot of the new products, you need to make sure the firmware is up to date. So in the system settings, put that into Google like this. I'll show you. So we've got that firmware there, .2613. If I go to here, paste it. Go to here. Look at the UK site. Okay, it's not the UK one, but there. And then there's the firmware there. So it is on the latest one. Make sure the firmware is always up to date, especially when you're adding new products to it. Um, it does tidy it up considerably and makes it more, um, yeah, basically always do the firmware. But reboot it. That might just be the simple fix. Sometimes they do get stuck. So anyway, it's online. I've deleted the offline one. Synchronization, I leave it on. It's on by default now. It synchronizes it. The latest firmware actually makes the synchronization between indoor stations and the information that you program within here a lot more, let's say, um, better. <laughs> I can think of a better, uh, another word, really. So under configuration, so we've added it. So under device management, we've added it as room one. Um, I change it to room one, so make it easy. Under configuration, all we're going to do is go into the intercom and obviously you've got all of these settings. I'm not going to go through all of this. This video was to highlight the small 4.3 inch addition to the range and how beneficial I believe it is. So what we're, all we're going to do is I'm not going to go through all the programming this. Done loads of content on that already. 
press button to call and you've got backlight settings now on disable automatic or custom so that's the backlit keys on the call station and you can adjust that appropriately so there's a quite a few little improvements in this firmware and all we need to do then is go to main unit or sub module i do have the sub modules but we're going to concentrate on the main unit button one time schedule is enable indoor station by default yes do that view button image that basically gives you the the layout of what we've got just I don't have them, but you can you can actually, there's a new device here. See this new device here? You can actually add these little devices in uh, and add like a hardwired push button into it, which then calls a room as well. So you can add like, th it's basically third party integration effectively. So it's quite cool. But then again, if you do sub module, you can do uh, the time schedule there, button one, da, 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 da. So it's pretty straightforward. Save. And that, we just have a look at something quickly. Yeah, so basically all you need to do is on the main unit, so button one calls room one. If you are sub modules there, button one on the sub module will call room two, or you could just type it in and put room six in there and save it. And yes, like obviously you need to change it appropriately, but that's as simple as it gets. A couple of things we've added in there is if you look at the session, well, not session, password settings, you can actually add a password now. So let's just say one, two, three, four, five, six, and you can choose if it operates lock one or lock two. So obviously on the back of the call station, there's two locks, two lock outputs. One could be a pedestrian gate. One could be a vehicle gate. You might only want to give a password to somebody like the cleaner that can only get through the pedestrian gate and it doesn't open the vehicle access gate. That's how we do it. We've added that functionality and it's been a while really hammered that and we've got that in the last couple of firmware so that's another good addition to highlight as well other than that a lot of it is very very simple nothing has really changed we've now added in the smart section we've actually got a fingerprint module so because the modulus intercom you can put all these different modules in there we actually do new release to have a fingerprint module which can be slotted in and that's how you program the false acceptance rate through there so if you do want to use Fingerprint for your intercom as an access control door entry. You can also do that now. So very, very straightforward. If I put it onto live view, if I press the live view button, you can see all I need to do is press the button now and you should hear it ring. So press the button one. That's now calling the indoor station we just programmed. And it is as simple as that. And then I can open lock one. It's as simple as that. What I am going to do now is transfer you back to the camera so I can give you a close-up of this um, indoor station effectively. It works. It's very simple. Very the, the functionality is exactly the same as all the other indoor stations. There are those four customizable buttons, and I'll show you how your customer can program them. Very, very simple. So stay tuned, and I'll transfer you back to the camera to see it in action. Okay, so we're back at the camera. You can see the indoor station there. I'm going to reposition the camera and really zoom in on that. We've programmed it using this stainless steel version. So it's that single call button that's built into the camera module. When I press it, you can see it started to ring there. I can see the indoor station on it. Let's be rude and hang up. I'm gonna transfer you or move the camera. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna talk you through what this looks like. So give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, 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 okay. So, try and zoom in. I might have to, I tell you what, let's. Okay, so uh, I've zoomed you right in today. You don't need to see me for this part. So as you can see, it's just, the interface is exactly the same as all of the other interfaces. Look, exactly the same, no problem. So what we'll do now is, if I call, wake it up, if I call it, so time and date, room numbers, all there, plus these touch screens. So I can call another room number, I can read my messages, if there is any. I can do live view of the door station. And you can see that, if I put it there, it's absolutely fine. You can see who's calling. The screen is smaller, granted, takes up a lot, lot less space. It is neater and compacter. 
perfectly fine for doing a video intercom system. Okay, so, and I can open the door. I don't even have to do it. I can open the door there. The door is open. Or lock output two, which could be the vehicle gate. The or, door is open. Etc. Then I can hang up. Go back. And then under settings, I've got all of the settings that the user can set. Volume, ringtone duration, etc. Ringtone, I can change it. I can add it to my Wi-Fi. So if I add this to my Wi-Fi, add it to the Wi-Fi, I can then call the Height Connect app. So it has the same functionality still. So simply add it to my Height Connect app, which would work no problem, as all the other indoor stations. Now, this preference here so if i go back to the main cut you've got these four buttons here like i said which are customizable so i can shut the screen down lose that wake it back up all i need to do is go to settings so you've got answer hang up live view and then don't disturb or mute etc and then the door open if i wanted to i could call that and then do door open the door is open. So that's another shortcut what you can do now is i'm oh, sorry Gone back into it again. Sorry. Settings. And then the, the home button there, you've got shortcut settings, which are like all of the things that appear on the home screen. So you could call management center, which could be the reception desk. If you put an SD card in there and enable snapshot, there'll be a snapshot recording on your indoor station too. But if I go to DIY button, you can see one, two, three, four, and they're all customizable. So I could choose button one. I could choose call elevator, for instance. Button two is unlock, which is that one. Button three, I could say call management, outdoor station B, and that one could be call management center. So I've assigned them all, again, really up to you. Go back home. Now, when I press that, there's no elevator, but it would call the elevator. So that's calling the outdoor station. Go back. And then I can... And that would call the management center. So some of these have to be enabled. No elevator. That one will call the outdoor station, and I can view it and then unlock the door if I want. Somebody could be on the phone delivering uh, Uber Eats or something, or other fast food things are available. Or I could call the center by pressing that one, but you have to come out of it to then use the next shortcut. But there is no management concierge desk area. That is as simple as this system gets. So it's a very neat, as you can see, very, very neat solution compared to the size of the other ones. Full functionality, still has the Height Connect uh, linkage option all of the functionality in a smaller screen, more compact, more cost effective. I quite like that customizable feature. I hope you do too. In stock at DVS, contact your DVS sales rep for more information. Other than that, see you next week for another how-to video.